All right. We are live. Typically, it'll show up here in the Facebook group in about 20 seconds. Let's see where we're at. Uh, yes. Okay. We are live. Okay. All right. So we're live today. Today is uh, Wednesday over here in the United States, early Thursday morning, where Marco is at. Uh, Marco, you're you're not in the Sydney office right now. I think you're up in Melbourne, right? Yeah, back uh, back in Melbourne. Yeah, seven a.m. my time. Back in Melbourne, seven a.m. Early bird special. All right. So today we've got a very special guest. Uh, this is Marco Cortese. He's actually our vice president of sales now uh, since January of 2021. We recruited him over here because of his sales ability, his leadership ability, his management ability, a lot of great things that he does. He's also a great dresser. He used to be a model back in the day. So we always he just he's like the best dressed guy. He's like Mr. Tom Ford over there. So look, Marco, let's let's go back a little bit. And before and before we do that, because 2020 was a massive year for you. Uh, you had a sales job. You made over a million dollars in straight commission. So let me repeat that to everybody. In 2020, Marco selling for a company was paid st on straight commission. It wasn't yeah. like he made this on a salary because nobody's going to pay you that type of salary. Yeah. He made over a million dollars selling straight commission in an industry where the average salesperson makes less than $50,000 a year. How is he making almost twice that every single month selling the same products or services? So we're going to break down Marco's sales process today for all of you watching. Now, just to let you know, we're streaming live right now in Sales Revolution Facebook group. We're also streaming live on YouTube and we're streaming live on my personal Facebook. Okay, so there's a lot of you coming in here. We've got 60 or 65 on here from these three channels. So if you're brand new, if you've not, if you're not a member of our Facebook group, you can go ahead and join it. I'll have Chris or somebody on our team post a link to our Facebook group. You can go ahead and join that. Uh, we go live in there five times a week, do a lot of trainings in there. You don't want to miss out. If you're brand new and you haven't seen us before, I'm the founder and chairman of an organization called Seventh Level, as he's got the cool seven up there. And we're a company that helps sales professionals just like you watching right now. So we help salespeople, coaches, sales executives and leaders, managers and entrepreneurs, business owners, transform the way you and your team sell by learning specific skilled questions and techniques that work with human behavior. Now, what do we mean by work with be human behavior? Because that means something rather than work against it. Completely different results. These are called neuroemotional persuasion questions. They stand for NEPQ. So if you hear that term, NEPQ, that's what we mean. Teach you the right tonality, put your prospects at ease, eliminate sales pressure. Can you imagine your prospects not feeling sales pressure, but actually feeling comfortable enough to open up to you and really tell you what's going on? Can you imagine that? And it gets your prospects to actually want to engage with you, to want to open up to you and tell you what's really going on, which gets them to sell themselves on what you're offering. Now, along the way of this live that we're going to break down Marco's sales process and give really his secrets and his questions. Mm. If you have any questions, if you want to know more details about how we can help you sell a lot more of your products and services, like we did for Marco back when he was a client, it wasn't even that long ago. Now he's a yeah. corporate officer. Uh, if you want to know more details about how we can help you sell a lot more of your products and services than you are now, like we have for thousands of salespeople and companies, even in the last two and a half years, in the comments section, just post hashtag NEPQ. So post hashtag NEPQ and either myself or Matt Ryder on our team, our CEO, or even maybe we'll have uh, Marco can message you more details to see if we can help you as well. Now, if you're on live right now, between uh, Facebook group and YouTube, we've got about 87 on live right now. If you're on live, I want each of you to post hashtag live in the comment section. So if you're on live right now, take a second, post hashtag live. I want each of you to post hashtag live. And if you're on the replay, I want each of you to post hashtag replay. So if you're on live, post hashtag live. If you're on the replay, post hashtag replay. Each of you as well, take one second, and I want you to smash the heart button real quick. I'm not letting Marco give you any sales secrets without each of you smashing the heart button. I'm going to blackmail people. You're going to smash the heart button real quick. And I want each of you to smash the like button or Marco's not opening up for his secrets. So smash the like button, smash the heart button several times. We have each of you do that. 
because it creates more engagement in the Facebook group and more people. We have like 8,400 people in the Facebook group, something like that. It's grown crazy since we started right. this months ago or opening up. All right, Marco, nobody wants to hear from you, yeah. boring guy over here. All right. So Marco, tell us, I mean, you're a pretty young guy. You know, I'm, uh, I'm just in my early forties now. I'm like the old guy here. You know, people call me uncle Jay. I'm like, dude, I'm only like early forties. How did I become uncle Jay? Like I thought that maybe in my sixties or seventies, people call me that, but now I'm an uncle. You're a young guy. You're still in your twenties, right? Yeah. 28. I'm sorry. I'm um, turning 28 in uh two month. So um, you're really 27. So here's a 27 year old. Okay. 27 year old guy out in Australia. Um, before we talk about 2020 and breaking down your sales process and how you made a million dollars in commissions that year, go back to what you were doing before 2020. What were you doing yeah. before 2020? All right. I saw pretty much everything. So I went from my early start was door to door. After I went to uh, gym membership, which I liked a lot. And after I sold insurance, which I made a little bit of money by selling insurance, went back to selling gym membership. And after that's how I met Matt. And that's how I started. The, how you the, got the, the company. All right. So, yeah, I know you were selling fitness memberships for like a hundred bucks. Um, yeah. What I understand from your story, you're making like five grand a month or something like that. And hey, for a 22, 23, 24 year old, that's not bad income yeah, starting yeah. out. Right. And then you got you got into you you got in with Matt uh, Ryder, who's now our CEO. Now this was before he was the CEO of Seventh Level. I didn't even know Matt at this point. Okay, you got in with Matt, and he kind of outsourced you and got you a job. And you were selling like these coaching packages. You were selling like coaching for like an influencer that teaches people how to generate leads or something, right? Yeah, it was like a six k and a thirty k. Okay, so you got this job. You don't have any experience in that industry. It's like considered the high ticket industry or whatever. And you start selling these 6K, these 30K. Now, around the same time that this happened, okay, because I'm, I'm remembering the timeline, Matt yeah. came to me and asked me to train him. So this was around, I think this was a little bit before he even hired you. So Matt yeah. comes to me, he just randomly hits me up. You know, I do a lot of speaking engagements. I don't really, I didn't really have a sales team or anything at that point. I just do a lot of speaking engagements. I just left my, uh, my corporate sales career and was like doing consulting on the side. Okay. Kind of semi-retired. Matt comes to me and he's like, Hey, will you teach me how to sell? I've heard you know how to do what you do, blah, 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 blah. So anyway, so I start teaching Matt how to sell. He was already doing really well. He's making like 20, 25 grand a month in commissions. Three months later, he's making like 60 grand a month in commissions. A couple months later, he's yeah. making hundred grand a month in commissions. And then he starts his own consulting agency and hires people like you. And then he hired you to work for this company selling these high ticket packages. And he started training you how to use NEPQ. Yeah. Yeah, plus I bought the portal as well. And you uh, have the portal. You started going through like the 2.0 version of the portal. Okay? okay. Then you started kind of getting more training, more advanced training that we offer, inner circle, that type of stuff. And tell us how things started to change for you financially. Yeah, he's, um, I mean, the most important part was this one is like, I used to be decent to selling before, right? Especially when I was selling insurance, they were good paycheck. But like the, sh the, the lifespan for a job was like, I, I, I never be fired from a job, but I always quit because I got burnt out. Okay. <laughs> It was crazy. Tell, it was us, just like, tell us what causes burnout in sales. Why did you get burned out? Yeah, because like I didn't have the process on the start, right? So like that's that's the biggest difference with NPQ is people don't understand. Like now I got a lot of room because like I got a lot of questions from the start. Like I got my old script in front of me because I was like, okay, let's do a comparison, right? <laughs> okay. It's terrible. Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like the uh I can see I got six, like seven, seven question overall. And after it was like pitch presentation, feature benefits, uh, how are we going to help you? How are we going to do that? Blah, blah, blah. So you were taught like the old traditional way of selling. Cause I know you used to be trained by uh, Cardone, right? Which I yeah. have a lot of respect. He's great at motivating. Yeah, people, great. great real estate. I mean, obviously very successful. That's kind of the training you were taught, like the grind it out. You yeah. know, ask a few questions, do your pitch. But what does yeah. that typically cause down the road? The problem is this one is like there is no emotional connection. So therefore, it's like at some point, as soon as you say the price, you you go for the bell for the boxing match. It's just yeah. that, that's how I felt. Like 
I, I never, and that's the mindset that, hey, you know, I was like, okay, I'm going to get this guy with some sort of objection handling, right? So when I used to role play, because I'm a big fan of development, right? I do one hour, one hour and a half role play a day. I used to. Um, it's like that was just role play objection handling. I never cared about question before, right? <laughs> so it was all about your pitch and then just objection handling, objection handling, like trying to, I don't want to say manipulate them because I know you're not like that, but just trying yeah. to like, you're in a boxing match, right? Boxing so match. Like, they throw a punch. You throw a counter punch, and it's basically whoever walks out of the boxing match either gets the sale or you don't get the sale. It's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> it's fine. Like I, I got the first question. Like, listen to this. Like, what did example, you used to? What did you used to do before we trained? Hey, 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 my name is Michael. I'm from X, Y, and Z. I saw you recently requested to join our program. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit more. Like, what leads you to put an inquiry through? That's 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 the second now, part. Now, something that everybody should know about Marco, because I think your story is remarkable. Before we really get in, because we're about to dive into his sales process and like what questions we taught him to ask, where he's making a million dollars a year in commissions. Uh, but one thing that everybody might not understand is that Marco lives in Australia. Okay, he yeah. now is is our vice executive vice president of sales, right? He's a business partner as well. Uh, but he's from Italy, so he speaks mm. Italian. Like English is what your second or third language? I don't second. know. French is the third. Second yeah. is so yeah. your second language is English. But in 2020, when he made over a million dollars in commissions, he primarily sold to people who spoke English. I just saw people that spoke English. Just. Yeah, it wasn't like he was selling to like you know the the Pope at the Vatican and they were speaking you know fluent Italian or anything. Okay, so. The point is, is he, his English is a second language, and if and if a guy who doesn't even really speak the language is speak is is selling to people who speak English and he speaks broken English, his English is pretty good now. How is that possible? Because you know, one thing that when I posted this yesterday, there was a bunch of people that commented they're like, "What industry is he in that allows you to make a million dollars a year in commissions?" And I'm like. Dude, you're not understanding. It's not like the average guy. It's not like there's industries out there where the average salesperson makes a million dollars a year in commissions. Just the dime a dozen, right? I'm like, nobody in his industry makes a million dollars a year in commissions. Like nobody does. The average yeah. person makes 50 grand a year. It's a skill level. That's the difference. That's what we have to understand. Everybody has to start thinking differently. It's not necessarily your industry. Now, if you sell $5 magazine subscriptions, that's one thing. But it's not necessarily your industry. It's your skill level that prevents you to make a lot of money in selling. All right. So let's talk about we came in. We taught you how to use NEPQ. Yeah. That stands for neuroemotional persuasion questions. You're, you just gave us your old connecting questions that you used to do. Yeah. What what did we have you do instead? How did we just have you start off the calls? Let's yeah. start the, the, the two most important things that we've done when we when me and you we've done the training because i've done training with you for everyone is watching is like i'm you know that's that's the most important part of how we fix things a little bit quickly is a done training directly with jeremy hey this is just michael i saw that you uh, you put in quite a about poss possibly help you out with whatever they told me that they want to come with right i don't want to bore you to that like what do you hope to get out of this call of course, as we go, the process of an NPQ change, like I don't like frame on the start of like telling them like this call is just for me. Yeah. I like to give them a little bit of control yeah. because that's the fuse rejection. So they, what do you hope to get out of this call? It's yeah. just like you the mic, you are the champ for 10 minutes. And after the, the, next, the question after, because I'm really good at in interrupting people. And uh, that's yeah. what I see really common when I do role play. Yeah, you guys let waffle everybody, and it makes no sense. Yeah, so I interrupt them at some point. I go, but do you like? Do you know what you're looking for? So, right, you you take back control. So notice what Marco did. I want I want to uh, spell that out for everybody. So what he's saying is he he calls back people. You know, at his job that he had in 2020, people booked on the calendar. He was a sales rep for that company. They were interested in learning how to generate leads for their own companies. That's what he was selling, like a form of lead generation through like Facebook groups. Okay. And so basically you get on there and be like, okay, Hey John, how's it going? He wouldn't talk about their weather or who won the game last night or where they live. Cause nobody cares about that. They just know that's a bunch of BS. They know that that's not generally what you want to know. They know it's a sales call and he goes right in. Okay. So it looks like you booked on the calendar today about, possibly 
uh, getting help, you know, getting some outside help with like growing your Facebook group, generating leads. And then he went right into it. Now, why, why do we want to use the word possibly there? What does that do in the human brain? Yeah, I remember uh, also when we started, you explained me something called a sumptive cell, right? Which is like make a person a position where it's like, oh, I already bought something. Okay, wait, 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 I'm not ready. You see, so it's like, there is the instant reaction, which is like, whoa, whoa, whoa I'm not ready. I didn't no, I didn't say that. I was buying anything. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, it, that is the first objection. Though is like, you want to, yeah. You want to put yourself into a situation where you have to ask question and find a problem, right? That's the, yeah. the that's that was the huge difference because I was finding a problem to the objection handling. Yeah, but that was like thirty minutes in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. See, see what Marco said. There's very key. Here's let me give a background on human psychology one hundred and one. This comes from behavioral science. That's my background in college. In the first seven to twelve seconds of every interaction you have as a human being with any prospect whether it's on the phone, whether it's in person, like a boardroom meeting or in a house or in an office building, or if it's even on Zoom, like we are now or, or StreamYard or whatever, within the first seven to 12 seconds, your prospect is picking up on social cues, okay? Verbal cues and nonverbal cues based on your tonality and what you are saying and more importantly, asking that trigger their brain to react in one of two ways. Now, the way Marco used to sell, because he was taught a certain aggressive traditional way of selling, typically triggers what we call fight or flight mode, where he's coming in like, oh, it looks like you wanted to join the program. Do you have two minutes to talk about it or whatever? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't say I was going to buy anything. I'm not ready for that. So it triggers automatic resistance, okay, where they try to get rid of you. Oh, I, you know, I'm not ready for this. I, I don't have time. Can you call me back? Uh, I, I'm not sure. But how much is it again? And it triggers them to react negatively to you. Or if you know the right questions, like even a term like about possibly looking for outside help to generate more leads for your business, that makes that statement neutral. So they can't argue with it. It doesn't trigger anything. You don't know if you can help them yet. yet. You haven't asked enough questions. Okay. But when I say possibly, it triggers their brain to become curious enough where it causes them to want to engage with this, to exactly want right. to open up to us because they don't feel threatened by us. That's the key there in our connecting questions. All right, so now that you've connected with them and you ask them the question, um, you kind of hand them the mic. Now, help me understand, what were you hoping to get out of the call with us today? Yeah. It's like you hand them the mic and like, oh, I hope I this and blah, blah, blah. And then you interject, right? Well, hold yeah. on, you know what you're looking for? Why do you interject there? What, 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 what's the reason? Yeah, the most important part is that from that question, what comes up, well, I want to understand what you guys do, the price, because I have, it's like when they go into a tangent, right? Uh, the focus goes into pretty much start giving you some sort of objection, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And remember that the most valuable equation, if you're watching this, the most valuable equation is not what you say on the call, but it's what they say. Yeah. So if they start talking about how, how they cannot do it, in the first minutes of the call, yeah, you're not doing a great job. So yeah. as soon as soon they as soon I let them like, well, I want to know the price. It's like, well, we, we can definitely cover that if there is a possibility to help. Now, exactly like, give me an idea just for see if we do my actually work for you. Do you like? Do you know what you're looking for? Now, what's a What's the connection there, right? Well, first of all, you've acknowledged what they said. So they said, well, I'm yeah. hoping to get some price. And, and now if you just sweep that underneath the rug and just say, well, you know, we'll have to see if you're a good fit for us and you're and we're a good fit for you. Don't say that because that, that sounds retarded. And everybody knows that if you come to the end of the call and you're like, oh, my gosh, this is a great fit. Here's my credit card. Do you think that they, they believe you're going to say, I don't think you're a good fit for us. We can't take your money. Of course not. People are not stupid. So when you, when we treat them stupid with those frames like that, they just, they, it reduces their trust level they have with us automatically. So what you've just done there is you didn't skirt, you didn't skirt around there saying, Oh, I want to know about the price of, Oh yeah, we'll definitely go uh, through the details of that. If, if, if you want me to, I'd have to know a little bit more around X, Y, Z. And then if you want, I can go through all the details if that's what you want me to do. And that makes them feel like they have control. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that's what I want you to do towards, you know, and they'll, they'll feel that they have control. But who has the control? You do. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So now that you've done that, then you want to find out what their current situation is. 
What did you mm. used to do before to find out what was going on? Like Let before me. you learned NEPQ? <laughs> uh, so the so if I used to get the objection there, man, is it, this script is messy. It's like, <laughs> oh man. So it wouldn't cost you anything out of your pocket today if I will make you achieve your goal. Oh damn it, no, I cannot say that. <laughs> you can't even say it. <laughs> All right, all right. Let's, so right, just let, let, let's let's keep this like they, they came out just for everyone watching. They came out before the call, right? Yeah. Uh, I was like, yeah, let's let's try to understand what's this the um, um the what, what I used to say before. It's like I cannot even read it. Like it's just so <laughs> you're too embarrassed, right? It's <laughs> like it's like looking it's like looking at a, a picture of like your the year you graduated high school 20 years later you're like man i look like such a dork i can't even believe it right it, that's kind of the way when you look at your old scripts all right yeah. so now we taught you situation questions to find out their current situation just and you know there's usually typically three four or five that we have you uh do let's not have you go through all those because of time what's one yeah. situation question you want to find out for what you used to sell uh the most important one that i learned and uh, i, I want to say a concept for everyone that is inside uh, watching, which is like, the, do you know what you're looking for? Does give you an outcome, right? And a PQ is really an outcome driven for each phase. Situation question has an outcome. Mm -hmm. And after you move to bottom awareness. So the outcome that I used to fish that is like, what exactly are you looking for in terms of what they, what they had from the call? Why? Because what they're on the call for mm -hmm. is what they need, but is what I need to ask for. Yeah. So what, what are you currently doing about X, Y, and Z? That X, Y, and Z is what they're currently doing is the most important question that I learned. Yeah. Because I never used to ask what they currently have. I used to be focused on what they were looking for in terms of like what they want from me. Yeah. Why do, was, we, why do we uh, have to find out what they're currently doing or have to solve these issues now? Why do we have to find that out? Two main reason because after after doing any PQ, I studied human behavior as well. Yeah, people when what we call report, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people they feel afraid when they jump. So oh, how am I gonna build the report? And they ask about the weather. If you ask a person, yeah, it's crazy. If you ask about if you ask about a person what they currently have or what they what they had in the past or how long they've been they've been having something like this, that's how you build a report because you're definitely interested on what they have. Yeah, but also because. Where the point, where the pain point is relying on, yeah, is on the one they currently you have. have to take them back into time of when their problems first started happening. Now, here's one thing we all have to realize: most of your prospects, even if they book on your calendar, but especially if you cold call or you go door to door or B two B and you're doing outbound leads, but even if they book on your calendar, most of your prospects, you have to understand, don't even realize they have a problem or they don't know really how bad their problem is, or maybe they do know they have a problem, but they don't know the consequences of what's going to happen if they don't do anything about solving it. Now, through your questions that we've taught you and we teach our clients, as you know, that you teach now, uh, you're able to help your prospects not only see one problem, but mm. also see that they have two, three, or four, or five other problems they didn't even know about before oh, you yeah. got 20 minutes before. And that builds what? Credibility. Really? That yeah. Builds trust. So, you know, like uh, the the difference is like most of the times, um, and that's I noticed the first month and the second month that I was the the, the um, that I started kind of training with you. Is yeah. the people at the, people in the end used to ask me, "Should I do it?" I was like, "Yeah, of course you should do it." But it's like <laughs> I, I, I never had it, but that like made me think. I was like, "Oh wait, since I've asked questions that are relevant to what we're talking about." That I'm like seeing as the person that is like, okay, for you, should I do it? Yeah, of course you should do it. And then we used to, we should be used to go ahead. So I was becoming a trust advisor. Now I had, I've, I'm, you know, I, I read a ton of books and a lot of, a lot of people talk about sales as a trusted advisor, but yeah. they don't understand the essence of it because they don't go towards human behavior, yeah. but also because they don't care about what current, what the, the client current has, what they had. Yeah. What, and how they actually got to have what they have. Yeah, we have to find out how they got to where they're at right now. That's called their yeah. current state. So your situation questions, and these are all in our virtual training courses. So if you're on here right now and you're a 2.0 member or an APQ 3.0 or advanced inner circle, you already know all these. You already have these weapons that Marco has, okay? So your situation questions help you, but more importantly, them 
find out where they really are right now. What's their current state? Now, once we found that out, we're then, and there's you know four or five other questions that you're going to ask there to find that out, where I'm not going to give all those now because we don't have time. But then you're going to go into your problem awareness questions. Problem awareness questions are there to do what? Help you and them find out what their real problems really are, right? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, the most important part of problem awareness, for example, is like is... And and I give you and I give you guys the reaction of like going from not doing it to do it is like people are not aware of if what they have they like it or not because they never ask them themselves that. When you ask it, it's like, well, you know, I don't really like it. Like, okay, well, what exactly you don't like about it though? Yeah. Like, well, it doesn't produce me X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And for how, how long that has been going on? So that is like the interest, right? Yeah. But it's also the direction they call as. It's pointed towards what? It's pointed towards the awareness of the problem that she yeah. didn't know she had, and I didn't know how that she had either. Yeah. Yeah, so we're asking them if they currently like what they have. So with yeah. you, when you were selling for that company in 2020, uh, you were selling, you know, business owners um, who were looking to generate more leads, generate revenue from yeah. Facebook. You're finding out what they're currently doing for leads, and then you're simply asking them. So the way you've been advert, so you advertising on X and Y Z platform. Do you do, do you like the way you're creating leads, or do you like the way you're generating leads? Okay, it's something to that extent. Now, why do we have that pause there between do you do you like, and then we repeat that back? Why do we want to pause there rather than saying do you like the way you're generating leads now? What's uh, the there is a there is a mirroring effect, right? So this is process works for human behavior, all right? So you start start from that, that if you go fast, they go fast. If you think about what you say, they're going to think about what they're going to answer. Yeah. So what we do is we, we use something called tactical posing, right? Yeah. Which is between some sort of, we do scatter intentional most of the times. Why? Because we want the prospect to lean forward and say, what? And be able to be receptive about what we say, which before I didn't, I never used to have. Before it was like pam 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 pam. Yeah, when we when we ask quick questions, we get knee jerk answers, right? They don't think about it. It's like if we go into a clothing store and we're looking to buy a jacket, and we say, "How can we help you?" And they say, "Just looking." It's a knee jerk question, which gives you a knee jerk answer. But when we have a verbal pause there or a tactical pause it triggers them emotionally to tune in and think deeper about what we're asking. hundred percent. All right. Um, all right. So you found out their problems. You found out the root cause of the problem. See most, as you know, Marco, most salespeople, even if you're average can find out what their problem is. Yeah. Most salespeople, 99.9% .9 don't know how to find out what causes the problem like the root cause of the problem. It's like going into the doctor and you're like, oh, my back hurts. And the doctor knows your problem. And so they just give you the prescription. You're not yeah. really going to trust that doctor. The best doctors are not only able to know what your problem is, but then they're able to help find out what's causing the back pain. Okay. Like what's behind it. And more importantly, how it's affecting them. That's why you go with that doctor. It's, it's the same thing. Right. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, exactly right. Like, you, you know, the assumptive tips, and I've seen it a lot you know, because I still get cold. Like, I, I'm I'm a buyer. I mean, that's why I think I'm good at selling. So I, I bought $100,000 into worth of sales training even prior, prior to NPQ, right? Yeah. It's like, the assumptive selling, guys, doesn't work. It just doesn't have the element of, like, being trusted. But it's, it's also this. It's like, how, like, put yourself into a situation of this, right? You overcome rejection at the end for a reason and the reason is listen i know you i understood your story mm -hmm. i understand what you how has that been impacting you and i don't want you to fall into that mm -hmm. so my responsibility is to trying to help you mm -hmm. on the other side you go i gotta get a paycheck um and i gotta feed my family which is there is nothing wrong with that don't get me wrong yeah. but it's like he's waving on them there is yeah. no sense for you to overcome rejection at the end because you don't know nothing about them yeah apart from the weather <laughs> yeah, you got to get rid of the commission breath, right? So you're able to diagnose them 
Okay. Not by just asking them, Oh, what's two problems that you have? Cause most people are not going to open up to that. That's too surface level. You can't just ask consultative questions. They don't work that well. Okay. Mm -hmm. You've got to go much deeper. You've got to work with human behavior. You can't just, if you ask a consultative question like John, what solution are you looking for? Or what's your budget for something like this? Or, um, you know, what's two problems you're having. They're just going to give you logical based answers in return and do human beings buy on emotion or logic. Uh, emotion, emotion, hundred percent of the time brain studies also, prove that also because like, for, uh, uh, and I'm studied, I've studied psychology, right guys? Logic into the brain is that whatever we think is logic doesn't exist. Even if you're trying to put one plus one on the paper, you just do it because you want to be reassured that it's true. It just is a reassurance. It's true. So it's still emotional. So Yeah, it's still emotional, 100%. We could dive deep into that today too. All right, so now that you've helped you, now that you found out what their real problems are, and that's why when you hear sales trainers teach you, you need to sell and find their needs. No, nope, nothing could be further from the truth because if you're only selling to their needs, you're assuming that they know what their real problems are. But how could your prospects know what their real problems are? How could they honestly know what their real problems are if they don't even know what solutions you have. If they, you know what prospects problems are because you deal with that all the time. Do they deal with companies like that or people that have the same problems? No, not at all. If you're selling to their needs, you're assuming they understand what their problems are. But 99% of your, your people you talk to don't understand what their real problems are. You have to sell to their problems. That's the main difference. If Marco, if you just sold to their needs, what type of commissions do you think you would have made? Uh, probably the work video, I was making uh, seven or five. Apart from insurance, insurance, I was making 15, one five, but I never made a hundred K. Yeah. Never. So you're making like a hundred grand a year when you're selling to their needs Yeah. and, and boxing them. And now you're talking about making almost a hundred grand a month when yeah. you're selling to their problems. That's the difference between selling needs to problems. I hope that just smacked everybody in the face there. What we just said. Okay. It's a big difference yeah. in your income potential. All right. So now you found that now you're moving into solution awareness questions. Let's keep going with this solution awareness questions are there to help them see here's their current state. They've now seen this. They're starting to see this gap. So yeah. awareness questions help them see what their future is going to look like once mm -hmm. the gap or once all these problems that you've helped them see they had, which they didn't know they had 15 minutes ago were actually solved. Tell us maybe one or two solution awareness questions that we've taught you to ask. For me, the most important question that you you gave me uh, is this one, right? So, um, and uh, as the Danny Pico script kind of evolved uh, and from there, right? It's like, so I go into us the impact and all the jazz. Uh, and after I go like, okay, let, let, let's do this just to make sure that what we do might actually work for you. Mm -hmm. Beside X and Z, yeah, you repeat what, what they said they wanted. Yeah. Well, what would be, let's say, your ideal criteria on whatever they tell you that they that yeah. you do it? Yeah. That that that, that is one, another one. It was one of the most important most, most important questions that I've asked because that make makes them feel that which is like, okay, this guy is trying to tailor it to what I do. So therefore, it's connected really with what about what I'm about to say in 15 to 20 minutes moving into that. Yeah, you know exactly. what to present back to them in your presentation. Exactly right. But he has, he has some he has some texture behind it. The texture behind it is like because I've asked you what are you what what, what would you like to have, like, yeah. and the way I used to picture it, the, the, what, I'm fa fairly fast and learning, right? Because I'm pretty disciplined. And yeah. the way I went when I went through the portal, the way how I imagine it is this one: is if I go and ask for an ice cream, right? And I want three flavors on it, and you ask me what kind of flavor I want, I walk out with the ice cream. Yeah. But people that don't understand what the clients want in terms of how it's related and how it's impacting them, they walk out with a different flavor. Yeah. That for you, your retention, because if you get paying commission, you get paid as cash is collected in this space, your retention is bad. Yeah, 100%. So you're basically, at, when you say, uh, okay, so besides, you know, what you sold, because you were selling lead generation, yeah. besides you wanting to have like a higher quality lead, you know, for more revenue, you know, just, just to make sure that what we're doing could actually help you. But besides you wanting X and Z, what are you actually looking for in like leads coming in? Like what would be, I guess, what would be like your idea criteria when yeah. we say just to see, you know, just to see if what we do would work for you, it automatically puts you in a position as 
someone they can trust that's going to help them get what they're wanting. That's all that does. Does everybody see how that works? Yep. Yeah, and also there's one thing is want to the one up. But if they give you like for example, I'm that's similar to what I used to sell. Oh, uh, I need better accountability. You say okay, better. Like how, how you mean by better in compared to what? Well, yeah. because the program that I have now, so then you have invaluable intel. Yeah, hundred percent. Right? So if, if they say something, it's more about clarifying. Let's talk about your clarifying and probing questions because oh, it's not just those surface level questions, right? That's not where the sale is made. The sale is made by clarifying and probing off of their problems and how it's affecting them and clarifying and probing what's behind their why. That's what causes a human, be, uh, human being to sell themselves on what you're offering. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, man. The, 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 those, the, those are the 100K questions. Yeah. If you're not probing and clarifying, you're losing money. Um, losing so a lot of money. <laughs> you're losing a lot of money. So the, the, the most important, I'm, I'm prior to give you the question, guys, I give you the idea of what, why we do that, right? So the way I perceive them is straight arrow into directly what they want to go. So if from the script, you're trying to move from a direction to another one, and you feel that the prospect is like, well, we don't have enough leads. Okay, hold on, how do you mean by enough? So instead of going and being a something to say, oh, you guys don't have leads, which can cause like, no, we do have leads, but not enough. Yeah, because most sales people would be like, oh, well, how many leads do you want? Oh, you want double? Oh, well, we definitely could do that. Let me tell you about this. And it's done. So he's you're, su you're suggesting going down that rabbit hole. Tell us that. Tell us that again. I, I want to make sure everybody wrote that down. So if they say, I don't have enough leads, you say. Oh, 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 oh hold on. How? How you mean you, you don't have enough leads though? Mm. What well, what that caused them to say? Well, in the last three months we didn't have the leads flow. Okay, and the, 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 that seems trouble. So what we do is also as well, really good guys, is we react genuinely to what the prospect has to say. Mm. If they didn't have leads for the past three months. I'm so okay. That seems trouble. Now you know having the leads though like how long has that been going on mm. oh it's been going on oh i mean it's it, so okay i understand the three months what you said right. but you're not having enough leads how long has that actually been going on for oh for a year okay not having the leads has that has that had an impact on you guys Boom. That's where it's at, right? Yeah. Somebody just put their Facebook uh, user, I don't know who it is, said intentional stuttering. Why do we teach our clients how to do it that way? Why? Uh, because you don't want to look like they are in a sales process. Yeah. That's really important. You want to be looking surprised of what the prospect has to say and what this prospect is coming from. Um, so it's more like, you know, I think once uh, when we first started training, I mean, the George Clooney, you, you remember that thing? Yep, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actor. Yep. yeah, the only to George Clooney. Like you, 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 as soon they realize they're into the sales process, it's gone. You, yeah. Like you're not, you're not going nowhere. The worst words you could ever get from one of your prospects is you're a great salesperson or you can sell ice to an Eskimo. If your prospect says that to you, 99% of them never bought from you. And you know why? Because they feel like they're being sold. And when people feel like they're being sold, when you feel like you're being sold watching this, what do you do? You shut down and you typically do not buy. So you don't yeah. want to do that. Somebody asks, what if some of the answers they give us are things that we can't solve for them? Shannon says, what if some of the answers they give us are things that we can't solve for them? I'm not sure what he means by that. Yeah. Uh, is it like, do you mean like the, uh, like the answer they give you, like is, is not a line. Well, give you an example, like Shannon yeah. sells, I think lead generation for maybe realtors or something like that. Shannon, I'm assuming that the people you're talking to have problems, right? Otherwise they wouldn't be on the phone with you. So they probably yeah. have a lack of leads or lack of listings or something. And I'm assuming your solution solves that for them. Right. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. So we'll maybe we'll come back to that question in a minute. So, um, okay. So now that they have seen, they see, um, Oh, Jonathan says, what if they don't know what their idea criteria would be? He's on uh, YouTube here, Jonathan Breshin. So yeah. if they come back and they say, well, I'm, I'm not really sure. Can I handle this one? Yeah. I have. And then I'm going to have you do it. 
here's what I, here's how we would teach our clients. Well, if you really thought about it, yeah. what do you think you'd be looking for? Or now exactly. if, if they still could, so if anybody's ever unsure, well, I'm not really sure about it. Or if you ask them, if you're selling B2B and you ask them like what type of revenue they're generating or whatever, they're like, ah, I'm not really sure. Well, if you really thought about it, what do you think it would be? Yeah. 99%, go ahead. I do it in a similar way. Like I used to, I generally ask them like, okay, based on what you had prior and what you, and what you have right now, I guess like if you really thought about it, like what, what would you like to have? And why do we ask that? Because I want to make them feel comfortable, but I want something better than what they have now and something better than what they had in the past. Why? Because if I know something better, I know what hasn't worked. Yeah. So whatever, what, what hasn't worked, I'm not going to present it at the end. Yeah. Like, is this? Is like, is that yeah. element of understanding? Yeah. Now, to answer that question, if they still come back after you say, well, if you really thought about it, what do you think it would be? If they still come back, which is like maybe 1% of the people would ever come back and say, well, I don't, I, I, I just don't know. Then you can make some suggestions. Like for Marco, when he would sell lead generation, he would say, well, for example, are you looking for like a, a higher, more sophisticated demographic lead that you want to your salespeople? Or are you looking for more volume of leads? Or what are you looking for in lead gen? See, mm -hmm. then he can give them some suggestions. But typically if you say, well, if you really thought about it, I mean, you know, Marco, everybody's like, well, and then they think about it. Yeah, especially if you give them a, a small time frame, because what that time frame helps them is like, okay, let me think of what my leads. Oh, well, really, what I'm looking for is qualified leads, right? Okay, that makes sense. So, like, what's the problem? It's like they don't have qualified leads, right? Yeah. So, right, you know, right there, what to present. It's like, well, let's say presentation stage, guys, we get at the end. It's like, well, like you said, uh, the issue was more likely to have qualified leads. So what we do is, and there you go into it. Perfect. Shannon just asked this question. I know, I know to answer this too. We can have you answer. Sometimes people may say things such as I want social media posts and I want SEO and websites. In my case, I don't help with SEO. How do I handle that? So all you typically do is like, yeah, I mean, so with SEO, it just depends on if you're wanting lead generation now, or if you're wanting like lead generation, like months or years down the road. So we don't technically do SEO because it takes so long to generate leads. We do like where you get leads now to make money now. Uh, but if that's something that's important to you for SEO, I could maybe refer you to somebody else that does SEO. But are you looking for more leads coming in now where your team can make sales? Or are you looking for like, you know, six months to a year down the road for leads to possibly come in? Because it takes quite a while with SEO. Mm. That's how, how would you answer that? Yeah, for me, I, I will probe a little bit, which is, okay, is that a main reason why you're looking for that specific? Yeah, we want to probe there first, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, oh, well, my friend John has this, this, and this. Well, I mean, in terms of his situation or your situation, now, would you be able to kind of tell me, what, what are you currently doing? And, and after we can kind of talk about if that could be the best for you, mm -hmm. uh, but let me ask, though, like, what do you currently have? So. Yeah. Yeah, sure. It doesn't. It doesn't matter where they come from in terms of like, oh, I saw, I saw my friend that had is is getting a ton of leads from there. It's like, yeah, that's your friend. Like, is my 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 might not be you, but let's look at what you have now and let's work with what you have now and see if what we do might actually work. I might have got to thirty minutes into the call and I was like, well, you know, it's not something that we do. Um, it's we do we do any we do something else which is a little bit faster. But it's up to you if you really, really want to go faster or if you yeah. if you want to if you want to, you want to take six months to do it. Yeah, you just like Marco says, you have to clarify and probe to find out what's behind that because maybe that prospect thinks that SEO is immediate and that leads come in the next day. Yeah. You might not understand that it takes six months to a year. Uh, he said, I tell the prospect if they ask for something we don't provide, I then tell them that that software program is a cookie cutter compared to what my company does. That's how I was trained. Well. Yeah, typically. And if we just tell them something like that, what do most people do in return? Yeah. So if a sales guy, and, and also, uh, is this Shane the guy? Shane? Uh, uh, this is Joseph. This is another guy, Joseph James. Joseph, yeah. think about it in this way, right? If we, me and you, we jump on a call, and you tell me, ah, oh, X, Y, and Z company, uh, I, want, I want X, Y, and Z company because they gave me X, Y, and Z. And I tell you, no, it's a cook together company. <laughs> Would you listen? <laughs> no. Yeah. If I show you why, right? If I show you why, that will make sense. Yeah, 100%. It's just clarifying and probing to find out what's behind that. Now, okay, so now that we have them see where their current state is, where they want to be, their objective state is, this big gap in between all these problems, 
We then want to do what? We want to yank their future state away by asking a consequence question. Why do we want to do that? I love consequence questions because the most, important, the most important things of changing someone is called leverage. That's uh, the psychology and human behavior and partisan behavior. So it's understanding that if they don't take action, what is going to happen to them? Yep. Uh, we use different one, right? I, I I hear this from a lot of guys into this group. Oh, if it's B to B, I'm going to be afraid uh, to ask what if they don't change. Guys, they're people, right? <laughs> they're people. Plus, we have way, which is what are the possible ramifications if you don't do anything about this, which is more like the language, right? Which is more yeah. tailored to B to B. Uh, but it's like that puts your point where people are capable to see what, like what is going to happen if they yeah. don't do that? So create yeah. urgency. Yeah. It, all consequence questions does is when you get them in emotional high state, when they're really visioning what their future is going to look like once all these problems are solved that they didn't know they had before they got on the phone with you. And then you rip that future away. But hold on. What if you don't do anything about this, though, in, in your situation, what you what you sold with these? What if you don't do anything about this, though? And you keep getting these same low quality leads coming into the company and sales keep stagnating another three, six, or even 12 months from now. See, I just pulled away their feeling of like, oh my gosh, it's going to be so great when our company's scaling to this. I just ripped that away and it causes them to defend themselves on why they have to change now and do that with you. Yeah, that's pretty right. Exactly right, and that's no, 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 no. I'm going to do something about this for sure. Go ahead. You know, like, and no, that's that's the most important part of the of the call. If you like, if you have an issue with urgency, it's because you haven't mastered that. Yeah, uh, you don't you know, you don't know. yeah, you don't know how to ask consequence questions. Like, ah, oh, my leads they have no urgency. That's why. Yeah, hundred percent. It's a it's a symptom of of your lack of understanding of your consequence questions. Okay, because all selling is is getting the prospect to view in their mind that it's far less risky for them to get money or funding or the budget to purchase what you're offering to solve their problems and get them where they want to be than doing nothing at all, staying in the status quo and their problems stay the same, which is more risky. You have to get them to see that it's far more risky to stay in the status quo and do nothing and their problems stay the same thing. You can only do that by asking what we're talking about in our virtual training courses for our clients that they learn like Marco, those type of questions, which he's just giving you like a little nibble of the questions oh. that we taught him how to ask. Now so you gonna... <laughs> <Tag, laughs> <tag. laughs> All right. So look, we're about to run out of time. So you, then you go into your presentation, your feedback, everything they said they wanted and how you solve that. And then instead of asking them at the very end, cause we're not going to mm -hmm. go through your presentation or anything right now, but at the very end, when you're closing them, we call that more commitment. Um, how did you use to close at the end before you learned any PQ? Uh, have you had enough to make a decision? Have you heard enough to make a decision? And what would typically people say? Uh, I'm, well, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, uh, well, I'm not sure. It was very, let, let me think though. So well, well, I'm not sure is that where I used to get a lot. Uh, the other one was like, well, I don't know what's the price of this because I do the check, the, the time check, we call it time check from the presentation and after the price. Oh, uh, well, I don't know how much does it cost. How can I know? But they were all like reactional, or like super reactional question. Yeah, 100%. So we obviously changed that because that doesn't work that well. And, you know, for our clients, we, we teach them what are called commitment questions. Now, I'm not going to have you give all of yours that we taught you and that you've learned from the virtual training courses and our, and our training programs. But what's one commitment question we taught you how to use? Do you, okay, I guess, like, do you feel that this uh, could be the answer for you, though? That's the most important one. Yeah. Why do you, why do we, why do we ask that? Feel. The feel, like that word feel into that is like, is, an, is, is really powerful. Yeah, because, because if, we, if we say, do you think this could be the answer for you? Now they start to think logically, but we want them to feel. Yeah, yeah, feel, feel. But it's just like, it's a feeling, right? Mm -hmm. Because what's coming after, if it has to be overcome, has to be overcome out of feelings. Otherwise, it's never going to be lo overcoming objection. Doesn't matter who, who you are. It's not going to be logical. Never going to be logical. Because there is always an element of fear in the middle. 
and fear is not overcome by logic. Fear is overcome by emotion. Yeah. Do you see what Marco did there, everybody? He said, so he didn't say, do you feel like this could be the answer for you? He said, do you, so do you feel like this could be the answer for you? Right. There's a pause there. There's a tactical or verbal pause. Very important. Um, Marco, any, all right. So any, any last words of advice for our listeners out there? Listen in. So yeah. I want everybody to know. So Marco had made it over a million dollars, almost 1.1 million in commissions in 2020 working at his job while we were training. He's one of our clients. And then Matt became our CEO about eight months, nine months ago. And we're like, who can we bring over here to really, you know, really run our training, run our sales, all that stuff. And we're like, we've got to get Marco. So Marco now is executive vice president. He's a partner in the firm as well. Uh, mm. We're very grateful for you. You know, you do a lot of our inner circle training calls. I, you know, you do the the Tuesday group training call on just objection handling that everybody in the inner circle program loves. So I want to thank you for that. Any last words of advice for everybody? No, I want to tell you thanks. All right. I think, uh, and it's, uh, it sounds always cheesy on those interviews, but like it's, it was, it's was, it was truly life changing. You know, I'm really grateful. I tell you every week. But it's like, it's really, really life changing for me because I had nothing before. So now I got a lot, which I really appreciate. The other one is for people that are watching. It's like, don't think I don't think like I'm Michael Jordan. Like I'm not. Um, it's not about motivation either, because like motivation. I'm a human being. I can go up and down. It's about discipline and skills. I'm really disciplined. I wake up at 3 a.m. if I have to, and I do it every day until 9 p.m. So if you if you watching now. And it's like, how can I make 100K a month? You have to be, number one, improve your skills. Because if you don't know what you're doing, you don't know what you're doing. And you can keep spinning as much as you want. The second one, you have to be disciplined. Yeah. You have to say, you have to do what you say that you're going to do. Yeah. yeah. It's it's all, you know, Michael, uh, Jonathan uh, Faradon said, how do you get the weekly calls? Jonathan, first step is you just need to join our 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 private Facebook group sales revolution. So there should be a link on there. We'll have someone in our team, maybe Chris or Eric or Valerie or Luke, maybe drop in a link of the sales revolution Facebook group. We have about 150 or 140 on here now through YouTube and the Facebook group. So if you're on YouTube or you're in my private Facebook and you're not in the Facebook group, we'll drop a link here. You can join it for free. It's called sales revolution, sales revolution, Facebook group. We have about 8,500 members in there from the last six months. Uh, we go live in there about three to five times a week. We do a lot of different trainings, give you little golden nuggets. Uh, and then you can get in there. You can uh, right when you join, there's like a questionnaire you serve, you'll fill out, Jonathan, like three questions. So we know what industry you're in, kind of what you do, what you're looking for. And then we tag each new member that joins every day because we get about 50 new people a day that join. And we send over to you in your uh, your DMs on Facebook. We send you a free training of about 40 minutes on objection prevention, like how to prevent objections from even happening. So we'll post that in there for you, Jonathan. Just join the Facebook group, Sales Revolution. You'll get that training and just tag us. And then either me or our CEO, Matt Ryder, or somebody else on our team can message you more details about our training program. So if you're on here right now and you, like Marco said, some of these other people looking here, um, if you want to learn these type of skills to make this type of income, be able to help a lot of your prospects, in the comments section, just post hashtag NEPQ and uh, we'll message you more details. Uh, Marco, sorry, I cut you off. He was just asking me, keep going there. No, no, I just uh, I just wanted to say to everybody is like that concept of discipline is like, it's the biggest one that I can give you because like motivation goes up and down. Like you're never going to be the same. It's how discipline you are is what you control to be the same. And discipline is also in your sales process. Um, but you got to learn the skills though. <laughs> so you have to learn the skills. It's just like, you know, I'm reading a book right now from Michael Jordan. And he said, you know, we always hear a lot of his quotes, but this is one quote I've never heard until a couple of weeks ago when I read this book. And he said, look, you can shoot a thousand jump shots a day. You can shoot 10,000 jump shots a day. But if your technique is off, if you're shooting with the wrong technique, you're not going to be that good. Sales is the same way. You can knock doors every day. You can make cold calls every day. You can do inbound and outbound leads 12, 14 hours a day. But you're still not going to be very good if yeah. you don't understand the techniques and the questions to use that work with human behavior. If you're still in the boxing match every day like Marco was before he started learning NEPQ and you're getting pounded every day and you're pounding back and you're worn out every day because you're triggering resistance by what you're saying and not asking, 
then you're not, you're never going to reach your full potential that you could. Uh, whereas salespeople like Marco and, and our other clients that are in our programs, th those type of levels that they're making 250 grand a year and 350 and 500 and 700 and a million dollars a year in hundreds of different industries. There's a reason why they're doing that where everybody else in those industries make a third of what they make. hundred percent. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. Okay. All right. Tomorrow, we're going to go live in the Facebook group at 4 p.m. Eastern. Mark your calendar. Set your notifications on Facebook. We're going to go live tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern with the Q&A. I'll do that. Maybe Marco will jump in there. Who knows? Sometimes so gracious with his presence. We're going to go live tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern. Q&A. Marco, thanks so much. Stay, Thank you, safe, stay safe out there. I know you're quarantined right now. You can't even go into our Sydney office. We have a big corporate headquarters there in Sydney, Australia, but we can't even go in there right now because freaking government in Australia locked down everybody. You can't even go into your business. Everybody's quarantined. So I, I yeah. hope you're enjoying your, your home. Yeah, that's that, that's all I can do. I can go around. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thanks, Marco. See you soon, everybody. See you tomorrow. Yeah, Bye.